champion in you. Let me read to us from the book of Genesis, chapter number 1, verses 26 through 31. Oh, I miss home. Oh, I thought I was going to be home. I miss home. All right, let me read. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth man have dominion so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he male and female created them and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it you can't subdue if you are not a champion and have dominion over the fish of the sea you can't have dominion if you are not a champion sea one fowl of the air two and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth that's not what i'm looking for verse 29 and god said behold i have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the and every tree and every tree in the in the which is the fruits of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat verse 30 and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given them i've given every green herb for meat and torso now verse 31 and god saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day god creates created us and described us not as good as very good my children is very good my wife is very good praise outreach community center members are very very good it is amazing to see that in verse 28 the lord said have dominion over the fish of the sea have dominion over the waters and over the fowl of the air air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth so god basically has given us three spheres where we must be champions in the air in the sea and on the earth if you would look at the air man has dominated the air uh, airplanes rockets that go to other planets it's dominion it's dominion god was very very specific about being a champion god did not create junk you are not junk god did not create failures have you not heard ye are gods ye are gods you are you are not a failure god does not know how to make mistakes you are not a mistake it is not in god's dna to make mistakes rather he has put in your dna a champion i often wonder what god meant when he said have dominion have dominion have dominion and god was specific like i said earlier the air the sea and the earth to have dominion listen ladies and gentlemen is to be a champion over a particular place area people or to have supreme authority 
to have power, authority, jurisdiction, and control. I was thinking about having dominion over the air. And I thought about Mark Zuckerberg. I thought about, uh, 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 what's that thing called? TikTok. They have so many now. It goes through the air. It goes through the air. It is dominion. It is control. I don't even think it is that bad in Nigeria as it is here. You would see a father, a mother, children, they would be speaking to each other on the phone. In the same house, on the table, they will be chatting each other. DNA of a champion is in you. DNA of a champion is in you. Who is a champion? Who? Who is a champion? Champions are made of intentional efforts. Predominantly, focusing on becoming a champion is a matter of will. It has to be desired. It has to be dreamed of and pursued. Champions are not born. Champions are made. They are forged by trials and error. You know, Colonel Sanders that's this, that came up with Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, he didn't really do it until 65. He was 65 years old. The issue is, what was he doing before being 65? He was failing. But eventually, he became a champion. Praise the Lord. Usain Bolt said, we all know who Usain Bolt is. No matter how far you get ahead of me, I'm going to catch up with you. That's my mentality. The mentality of a champion is that you will always win. I tell you, you can win. I don't know what it is you've tried, you feel that, go back to it. If you can see it, you can have it. Tell the person sitting next to you, I'm a champion. Until you actually start believing yourself to be a champion, you won't get there. You won't touch it. Champions never complain. They are too busy getting better. There is a man in America, John Wooden, he's one of the greatest football coaches, not soccer, but the American football. He said, Champions never complain. They are too busy getting better. What is it you are complaining about? Nobody owes you anything. Let me tell you something. When God created you, He didn't create you to be an employee. He didn't create you to go seeking help. He created you to be an employer. He created you to be a helper. Change your mentality. You are a champion. You are a champion. A champion is someone who gets up even when he or she can't. Uh, um, I, I have some health issues I'm dealing with. So I have to get up every morning. Every morning to exercise. Most mornings it's cold. It's cold. But guess what? I have to get up. A champion is someone who gets up even when he or she can't. When you get to where you have stopped, that is when you begin as a champion. Let me quickly read to us Isaiah 55 1. Ho! Oh, everyone that thirsted. Come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Who is that? As a champion. You must thirst. If you are not thirsting, you can get there. You cannot. You cannot. In the book of Romans, Chapter 12 and verse 2, the word of God says, And be not conformed to this world. Don't let your 
environment determine who you are don't leave pool determine who you are okay be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your heart of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable perfect will of god you have to prove it it's in your hand look the last time you went to take a bath did god come down to wash your back to wash your face or to dry your body ye have to make that move you have to decide determine to be a champion otherwise you will never get there i'm going to share some things with you i'm going to share some things with you um let me quickly read philippians 3 13 through 14. philippians 3 13 through 14. hallelujah okay it reads thus brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do listen now listen forgetting those things which are behind your failure of yesterday does not determine your success of today forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before what is before you your success becoming who you really want to become forgetting those things which are behind so what somebody said this about me somebody said that about you so what somebody did not lend you a helping hand what do you do verse 14 i press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of god in christ jesus let me say to you ministry here is different from ministry in nigeria A lot of people don't even believe Christ exists. Everybody has to work. They have to pay bills. So when you invite people to church, <laughs> they look at you like you're crazy. And um, 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 the culture here is so different from the culture back home. I now source of these things. I won't do what I'm called to do because i'm in the uk no i will do it what i would like us to do is to look at some traits some traits of a champion um i wish someone will send me a message to know what time this sermon is supposed to be over uh, champions are dreamers <laughs> i dare you to dream idea if only you can dream if only you can dream if only you can dream i'm telling you if you can dream it you can have it if only you can dream let's quickly go to ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 this is my old bible the pages as taken together it's a very popular scripture but i'd like to read it because i want to focus on one or two words in that scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 i read to us now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us my question to you this morning what is the level of the power that works in you do you give up easily do you try once and you say you are not trying a second time are you always looking for someone to blame is it always somebody else you never find any fault in yourself you never make any mistakes talk to me somebody the power it's about the power that works in you it's about the power that works in you is there any power working in you 
that's the question today let's quickly read also from the book of psalm chapter 3 verses 13 through 14 did i get that right psalm chapter 2 verse 8 yeah psalm chapter 2 verse 8 it reads thus ask of me and i shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession the thing you need to do is ask ask of me you wake up in the morning what's the first thing you do you go check your messages on whatsapp do you spend time with god if you don't spend time with god if you used to wake up at five to so that you can get to work on time through public transport start waking up at 4 30 because the rest of your day depends on that quality time that you spend with god you have to spend time with god so you can hear him so you can receive instructions for the day so you can know how that your dream is going to come to pass can you imagine olympic athletes practice for four years preparing for two weeks of events they dare to dream they dare to dream what big dream do you have even if you are just an employee what is your goal what do you see what you are what you are seeing determines where you are going hmm. that place where you are working it got places there just to work or to learn what they do there and to do it even better and become the next big thing you know scripture 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 scriptures scriptures are so real it says eyes have not seen neither has ears heard what the lord has in store for them that love him so <clears throat> if you have seen tesla eyes have seen it yes i've heard it there's something better than tesla something better than x something better than uh, tiktok haven't you noticed that there is always something new that is coming out and when this thing comes out for crying out loud's sake it's not from christians it's not from us it's from people who do not even know the lord so the question is how much time do you spend with god to receive the vision and how to to become a champion um kellogg's rice or oh, these kellogg's conflicts kellogg's this kellogg's that you know if you read the story of kellogg's he would lock himself up pastor joel can testify to this he would lock himself up two three days when he comes back he comes with another product i don't know how many Products as Kellogg's Brown Flakes, Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Oats, these Kellogg's, 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 Kellogg's. There is still something to take this world by storm that the Lord is reserving just for you. Spend time with Him. Spend time with God just to hear. Things will start to fall in place once you decide on where you are going. Because then and only then will you be facing the right direction. You see a lot of non-Christians doing well. Because when God looked at his creation and said it was good. <laughs> as at that time there are no Christians, no Hindu, no Muslims, no Jews. It was all of his creation. Later on, people became what they wanted to become. People changed, but it was everything that he created that was good. We have an advantage. We can reach him. We can speak to him. He will hear us. He will speak back to us. Why are we not taking that advantage? Why are we not taking that advantage? The other day, I was listening 
and I saw some statistics that says everyone with a seven year plan to become a billionaire and they articulate those plans usually by the fourth year by the fourth year four one two three four by the fourth year they become billionaires how many of us here has seven year plans and a meticulous way to reach where we want to go things don't just happen things don't just draw from heaven Let me move on. Champions are extremely confident. That's the second one. The first one is that champions are dreamers. The second one is that champions are extremely confident. Extremely. They believe in themselves. That is why uh, uh, Usain Bolt said, no matter how far you've gone ahead of me, I'm going to catch up with you. I'm going to catch up with you. You ain't going nowhere. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 35 through 36. Let me quickly read that to our hearing. Cast not away therefore your confidence. <laughs> A lot of us just lose our confidence. Somebody just hey, yells at us and the confidence is gone. <laughs> My little boy is not here. Somebody told him he cannot play professional soccer. This boy is twisting my arm. He says whatever he does, he must play professional football so that he can show that person. I've never seen such confidence. He stays in the backyard. He's always playing ball. He wants me to register him in an academy. I've not done this because I'm saying if you become a professional footballer, they play all their games on the Sabbath, on Saturday. This is why I have not, but the boy is so confident and so determined. Let me read verse 36 towards the game. Okay, sorry, 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Your confidence has a great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. This confidence we are talking about of champions is born out of the fact that they know they can do all things through Christ that strengthens them. Their spirit is in, is in tune with the word. The word is the spirit of God that spurs them on. Spirit to spirit. Let me not bring that in yet. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted more than that which you can handle. He will also make a way of escape that he will be able to handle whatsoever. Glory, hallelujah. You live in extreme confidence. You know, Redeemed Christian Church of God has a franchise, Jesus House. Washington DC, Jesus House, Baltimore, Jesus House, London, Jesus House. The same way we have TTC, the Transformation Center. We have it all over. Nigeria, here. Yeah. That's my dream. A place where every church member will have a seven year plan. <clears throat> every church member. And we would have people who are following them with their plans, making sure that they are on course. Imagine billionaires in the marketplace. We won't have to worry about all these things we are talking about in Nigeria. Because we will be the ones there. Don't want to go into politics. <laughs> I dare you to lift up your eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh your help? 
Say to that person next to you, I am a champion. Say it like you believe it, you are a champion. Start by winning every small battle, which will lead you to winning the big battle. You don't have to make one million naira your first day of business. After a first inflow, build up your confidence and aim higher. Talk like a champion. Walk like a champion. Breathe like a champion. And train like a champion. May the Lord give me grace and mercy that everything I need to do to become a champion in my sphere, I'll be able to do it in Jesus' name. Champions are willing to learn. <laughs> no joke. If you listen to Miles Monroe a lot, he tells you every week he reads four magazines and one book. Every week. Every week. That's Miles Monroe for you. He reads. That's what made him a champion. Champions are willing to learn. Are you willing to learn? Let me read to us Proverbs 1 5. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5. It reads thus A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and the man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels i'm reading from the king james version so if it is being broadcasted over there please let's do king james version together next scripture i want wow a wise man will hear and will increase learning increase learning you never stop learning you never stop proverbs 18 chapter 15 Things must change in our midst. Things must change. Things must change. We keep saying righteous billionaires. What steps are we taking towards becoming righteous billionaires? <clears throat> the heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. When you seek knowledge, you are looking to learn. You are looking to every great athlete <laughs> has a coach willing to learn champions are coachable or shall i say teachable they like to listen and acquire more knowledge <clears throat> champions always have a mentor champions always have a mentor I spoke with my mentor for like an hour yesterday. Pastor Victor and I also spoke for like, I spoke with Pastor Buki for like an hour. Pastor Victor and I also spoke for an hour last night. Champions always have a mentor, someone they listen to. Champions learn up and also learn down. There are times I need to take decisions and I call Pastor Victor. A few other people there, I say, look, this is what I want to do. What do you think? Pastor Victor will always tell me, Pastor, let me go and pray. Then uh, Pastor Yemi Adeshi will give it to me back. It doesn't take time. <laughs> I love to listen to him. He doesn't send. I hope you know what that means. He will say it right back. Back there. You either take it or you leave it. Champions are coachable, teachable. They listen. They acquire more knowledge. Champions always have a mentor. Someone they listen to. Champions learn up and they learn down. <clears throat> Is Tiger Woods a champion? Is Serena Williams a champion? All these greats have coaches or mentors. 
the 12 disciples had Jesus and Jesus had the Holy Spirit an old man once said if you stay in the company of five billionaires long enough you will be the sixth billionaire <laughs> and if you hang around five losers long enough you will be the sixth loser you can't be around people who are going somewhere and don't go somewhere you will be left out you would be left out you'll be left behind who is your circle of influence who are the people you talk to look if you hang around okada riders you too you become an okada rider <clears throat> because that's where your inspiration will come from champions are learners who are you learning from? Champions have what I call extraordinary determination and commitment. Extraordinary determination and commitment. I must. If I die, I die. I can't stop. I will keep on going on. I will keep on pushing. That's champions for you. Let's quickly read from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It's not a strange scripture. I can do all things. How many things can you do? All things through Christ, which strengthens me. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. <clears throat> I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Can you tell yourself, not the person sitting next to you, can you tell yourself you fought the good fight? Can you look yourself in the mirror and be satisfied? with what you have put in the effort you have put in into that matter <coughs> you fought the good fight can you say that i can't even say that as much as i try because i'm yet to see dividends i'm yet to see well people point to this point to that point to that they are obvious they call them dividends but me i'm not satisfied i don't know if you're listening to me the day you become satisfied is the day you die is the day you stop is they say uh, good once you take that deep breath you are gone no. i'm not satisfied not at all <laughs> Ah, I do a lot of readings on people that I consider great or successful people. Bruce Lee. <laughs> Some of us might not know who Bruce Lee is, but I'm sure the Muiwa Jais, the Kulia Tejo is. Uh, ah, Osa, you should know who Bruce Lee is. Bruce Lee said, To hell with circumstances. I create opportunity. I don't wait for circumstances. I create my own opportunity. What opportunity are you creating? Hello? What opportunity are you creating? A story that is very intriguing and I challenge all of you to go and read this story. How many of us know know who Sylvester Stallone is. Sylvester Stallone is one of the greatest actors, one of the richest actors till date. Do you know that his blurred speech is a birth defect? It's a birth defect. 
the way his face is shaped is a birth defect. He told his mother, I'm going to be a great actor. And they pleaded with him, go and learn a trade. The guy said, no, I'm going to be a great actor. So he started acting. The first acting job he got was for $50. Out of that $50, he bought a dog. So he was trying to get into acting school. He sold that dog. He now... He, he, he read a story or he saw a movie and that is how he came up with what is this movie? Is it Apollo? I've forgotten what that movie is. Uh, what's that movie? Rocky. Rocky. So, when he saw, when he started writing Rocky, he didn't have money. He sold his dog to pay people who helped him develop the scripts. Listen to me carefully. He sold his dog. When he sold the dog, he started marketing the script. And people fell in love with the script. And they offered him one million dollars to sell the script. Did Sylvester Stallone sell the script? No. Until he became the one that acted Rocky in that movie. As soon as he got paid, he got his money, got his royalties. He went back to look for the guy who had the dog. He asked to buy the dog back. The dog is sold for <clears throat> for fifty dollars, he offered the guy. Uh, he offered the guy one thousand. No, he offered the guy one hundred and fifty dollars. The guy said no. At any rate, he ended up paying fifteen thousand dollars to get his dog back. Until today, Rocky is one of the greatest films ever. He was extremely determined. Extremely determined. I'm getting signs here. That I have only one more minute. I have 10, but let me mention this. Champions take massive and consistent actions. Read to us from the book of James, chapter 2, verse 18. James 2 18 says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. John 3.17, very quickly, very quickly. John 3.17. Okay. John 3.17 says, For God sent not his Son, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. One of the most consistent people we ever know or know of is Jesus Christ. He will always find time to go and pray. Let me read my notes quickly. You have to practice every single day in order to be extraordinary. Hear this. Leonel Messi said to a reporter, For every practice, I start early every day and stay later than everybody else. It took me 17 years and 114 days to become an overnight success. This next story is the one that really, really blew my mind. Guy named Jesse Rodriguez was promoted to the senior team of Real Madrid Football Club. And the coach told him to get to the training ground early the next day. He was determined to impress the coach. So he got to the training ground two hours early, only to see someone who had been there for an hour training. 
Who is that person? His name is Cristiano Ronaldo. You don't just become a champion overnight. You have commitments and you are consistent. I pray that this, you know, I'm not used to preaching sitting down, but that these words of mine today will have touched some of you somewhere where you need to be touched. That things will change for you. And that champion that is in your DNA, by reason of this little point, you can pull it out, you can extract it, and the world can see the next big thing that the Lord has created. God bless you. Thank you for your time.